Welcome to another week of Empowerment Technology Subject. Again, I'm your teacher, Shalami W. Pareha. For this week, let's talk about planning a social change or planning a social campaign. So before starting a project or a campaign, you should be able to do necessary paperwork better known as concept paper. This allows experts to see if your project is doable over the time frame that was given and if it is significant enough to be made it into reality. So concept paper on ICT project or information communication technology projects. So when we say concept paper, it is a document used to convince a panel of potential funders to help a product, a program, or a service become a reality. And in our case, we are planning to use this device to convince a panel of potential funders to help us for our social campaign become a reality. So there are different um, elements of concept paper. They are the following. We have here introduction. This includes your mission and vision and brief introduction of your projects or campaign. Number two, we have purpose. This includes the reason why the project or campaign is worth your sponsor's time, effort, and money. Next, description. This includes all the necessary information about the project. It involves the websites or page you are going to produce and the purpose of each and how they work in unison. Next, we have support. This contains the budget needed for project through some concept papers that do not specify any amount requested from the sponsors. Last but not the least is the contact information. This includes information on how the group can be contacted. So for here, we are going to utilize SMART. When we say SMART, it is an acronym designed to make it easier to remember several key points for successful goal setting. Each letter represents a separate point and has a question to clarify outcomes. For example, we have here the SMART criteria. So your project or campaign must meet the SMART criteria. So as I have said, it has questions that needs to clarify outcomes. First, we have S for specific. So what do you want? What is your goal? What is your first step? What specifically will you achieve? Next, we have M. M stands for measurable. How will you measure the goal? How much and how many? What standards will help you decide whether the outcome is acceptable? And what are the milestones you can track along the way? A stands for achievable. Is the goal achievable considering the time scale set and the resources available? What will stop you from achieving this goal? Do you have the resources to achieve your goal? The next is R. R stops, um, stands for relevant. How committed are you to attaining this goal? Do you have any reservations about the goal? To what extent is this goal aligned with your interest? What might be the consequences if you do not achieve this goal? Last but not least is time bound. What time scale are you looking at? What is an appropriate deadline for achieving the goal? So if you want to achieve greater success, start using the best SMART criteria to set the goals for performance or specific project. You first need to outline the specific outcomes that you hope to achieve. After defining the outcomes, define the metrics that you will use to track your progress and measure success. 
Each goal should be achievable and relevant. Review the goal to ensure that you have the necessary resources. The last step is setting the target date for completing the goal. This gives you a deadline to work with and help you stay on track. Then, you can now start using SMART to make smarter decisions in your personal or professional life. Just remember to maintain some flexibility to deal with any challenges that arise. Now, let's talk about the characteristics of a concept paper. So, the characteristics of a concept paper. A concept paper has the following characteristics. It writes a clear and succinct, so I think this is sufficient, purpose statement. So when we say your purpose statement should be direct, clear, and detailed. You should show your knowledge of the organization you belong in the introduction. Number two, let the administration know that you understand the types of project and the vision mission of your institution. You should provide the administration the illustration alignment between your goals and the school's idea. Number three, explain what you need from the organization and why, including all the anticipated budget, estimated cost of your operation, and upstart, equipment, and supplies for the implementation. Fourth one is relate to the administration the connections between your ideas, your plans, and your expected outcomes. By linking thoughts to action to results, you illustrate to the organization that you have the thought out the project from start to finish and have not overlooked any important details. Number five is emphasize the benefits of the seminar, training, or the workshop. So end your proposal by visiting the benefits to the participating participants or the schools. So, giving a more in-depth explanation of reasons the project will be beneficial to the organization will help to reinforce the positive outcomes mentioned in this introduction. So, let's have now the simplified project process overview. So, this is a overview of the uh, project process on how we are going to conduct it. So, of course, the first part is the planning. It involves the following tasks like conceptualization, researching, setting deadlines, assigning people, finding a web or blog host, creating a site map, listing down all applications that you need, and funding if applicable. The second process is development. It involves the actual creation of the website and it involves the production of images and infographics. The third process or step is release and promotion. It involves the actual release of the website for public view and promoting it. Promotion typically starts before the actual release. Last but not least is the maintenance. It involves responding to feedback of your site visitors and continuing to improve your website so as you manage your website you will encounter different behaviors so here um, in social media campaign or in social media according to Rebecca Dai a social media manager at first direct should know the different behaviors in social media so now we're going to talk about the 12, 12 different behaviors in social media so the first four are the following. The ultras. They check the feeds dozens of times a day. Happily admit their obsession. So 14% of the Facebook users spend at least two hours a day on the network. The next one is the deniers. Social media do not control their lives but get anxious when unable to access the network. So 20% of Facebook users would feel anxious or isolated if they do not deactivate if they do, if they had to deactivate their account the third social behavior in social media or the third behavior in social media is the virgins taking first tentative steps in social media so 19 percent of people don't use any social media networks so the fourth one is the pickups popularity contest high numbers of followers fans 
likes and retweets. So, 1 out of 10 Twitter users want more followers than friends and also same as with other social media like Instagram and Facebook. The next set of behaviors are the following. We have heard the lurkers hiding in the shadows of cyberspace. Um, they watch what others are saying but rarely or if ever participate themselves. So, 45% of the Facebook users describe themselves as observers. So, we also know, know that the lurkers as observers. The sixth type is the ranters. So, Mac and mind in face-to-face -face conversation. So, they are highly opinionated online. So, the seventh type is, seventh behavior is the change links. So, they adapt completely new personalities online. So, no one knows the real identities. The eighth type of behavior is the ghost. They create anonymous profile for fear of giving out personal information to stranger. So the last set of behavior, the informers. So they seek admiration by being the first to share the latest trends with audience. Also, the approval seekers constantly check feeds and timeless Timelines, I mean, sorry, constantly check feeds and timelines after posting. So, they worry until people respond. So, so they were called the approval seekers. The 11th type is the quizzers. So, they ask questions allowing them to start conversation. And not last but not the least is the deepers. So, they access their page infrequently, often going days or even weeks without posting. So, the word. They were the deeper. So, these sets of uh, behavior, different behaviors in social media that you can encounter as you manage your social media um, platform or your social media um, campaign. So, now let's proceed with our learning activity worksheets or law. So, let's accomplish our law for this week. So for this week, we have activity 1, multiple choice. So directions, read each item carefully and choose the best answer. For our activity 2, we have crossword. So directions, read each statement below on the given law and choose the best answer that reflects each statement the most. The answer for each statement may be found in the word bank. So you have already your copy of in the PDF file or in the Word file or hard copy. So, please refer to that. Next, for Activity 3, Activity 3 will be one of your, of your first performance task or projects in the subject empowerment technology. So, choose from the given topics, then create a concept paper using a smart criterion. So, your, your concept paper can be submitted in a hard copy um, to, to our school or also you can send it via our Google Classroom. So that is our first performance task or as our project for this second grading for empowerment technology. So if you have any more questions or clarifications, do not hesitate to send your questions or how to improve our video lessons. So that is my email, my contact number, my Facebook account, and also my MS Teams account. Always remember to stay safe and happy learning to everyone.